Jean Gale. Here. Mann. Here. Deuster House. Here. Bauer. Here. Holbrook. Here. Havermo. Here. Farha. Here. Sasson. Here. Ryan. Lepper. Here. Mussolino. Here. Brink. Here. Heineke. Here. Post Lodge. Here. 13 present, one absent. Yes, all to one. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. Move the minutes of the previous meeting be approved and as printed. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Our first petition is by Early Childhood Education Center requesting permission to hold their annual Week of the Child Parade April 7th at 10.15 a.m. and again at 1.45 p.m. Parade will start at Salem Church parking lot south on 9th to State, west on State to 8th, north on 8th to Kentucky, then east on Kentucky to 9th, back to Salem Church parking lot. They are... down Main Street to 5th Street. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move we go the same course. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. I have a revocable commit for encroachment of city right away by the Quincy Medical Group and Quincy Autism Support Group requesting permission to tie blue ribbons on city-owned street light posts along Main Street 4th to 12th and around Washington Park from Monday, March 31st to Sunday, April 6th. The Director of Utilities and Engineering presents this request subject to, one, the petitioner is responsible for the purchase, installation, maintenance, and removal of the ribbons, and two, the petitioner is responsible for any damage to city infrastructure. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I move we concur with the engineering department. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Another revocable permit for encroachment of city right away by the Salvation Army, 405 Vermont, requesting permission to place portable no parking signs and traffic cones in six parking spaces on the north side of Vermont, 4th to 5th from Monday through Friday, June 16th through August 8th. The stalls will be blocked from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. for the Croc Center Summer Day Camp. The Director of Utilities and Engineering presents this request subject to the following conditions. One, do not block no parking zones marked with yellow curbs. Two, do not block proper access to fire hydrants and maintain a five-foot clearance around all fire hydrants. And three, the petitioner is responsible for any damage to curbs, gutters, sidewalks, parkway, roadways, landscaping, trees, and signage. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move prayer petition be granted and proper authorities notified. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. The next revocable commit for encroachment city right away by the Salvation Army at 405 Vermont requesting permission to place portable no parking signs and traffic cones in three diagonal parking spaces on the north si 5th Street side, east side of Ray and Joan Crux Center on various dates and times. This is to accommodate the parking of a Coles wholesale refrigerated box truck. The Director of Utilities and Engineering presents this request subject to the following conditions. One, do not block no parking zones marked with yellow curbs. Two, do not block proper access to fire hydrants and maintain a five-foot clearance around all five fire hydrants. And three, the petitioner is responsible for any damage to curbs, gutters, sidewalks, parkways, roadways, landscaping, trees, and signage. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move we go same course. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. I have a request by the crossing, 150. South 40 is requesting to waive ordinance section 31.119. It shall be unlawful to drop leaflets, handbills, or any articles whatsoever from any airplane, airship, or balloon over the city, to drop empty taped Easter eggs from a helicopter over Flynn Stadium on April 18th for their third annual Easter egg hunt. No one will be on the field at the time of the drop. FAA has approved the event. Proper certificate of insurance from the crossing and the helicopter pilot will be provided to the city before the event. Also, they are asking for possible landing at the crossing soccer field to load up more eggs. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman Farha. I move that the ordinance be waived and permission granted to allow them to land. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. And our last petition is by St. Francis Food Pantry Benefit for Janet Jam, requesting permission to conduct a route and have the bond requirement waived from now through June 21st. Clerk recommends approval. So moved. 
Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. I have the mayor's appointments and I'm going to read them all before we uh, make a motion. Um, the first one is um, Stephen Meckes, a three-year term, Carrie Anders, two-year term, and B B Barry Chain, a one-year term to the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. The next one is Alderman Sasson, Lepper, Bauer, Frank, Holbrook, along with Michael Hinkamper and Mary Ann Barnard to the Garbage and Recycle Committee. And the last one is Jamie Foster, Megan Townley, and Walter Geising to the Quincy Preservation Commission. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move the appointments be confirmed. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Our first resolution is um, authorizing use of tax increment finance funds from Siebert Perkins Design Comprehensive Wayfinding Signage of 55000 with grant funds from the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Flex Plan Planning and 25% match from TIF in the amount of $13,750. And we also have a request to speak on that. Mr. Chairman. I'm yes, I'll uh, suspend the rules and let the speaker speak. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Order. We now hear from our speaker, Mr. Travis Brown. And Mr. Brown, if you could state your name and address for the record, and I'll remind you you have five minutes. Sure. Uh, Travis Brown, representing the historic Quincy Business District at 128 North 5th. Uh, before the meeting, I had a chance to put a letter at everybody's table, but wanted to just take a brief second because I know you probably haven't had a chance to really read that. Our board met last week. Um, our committees have been meeting over the past month, and uh, we very much uh, strongly support both of these two. Uh, ordinances or resolutions uh, the first one being the wayfinding the second being the the second street project and just wanted to come and and let you guys know because we have tried to take a more vocal role in in the TIF expenditures and let you guys know that we have discussed this with all the property owners and we really feel like these are two very very strong projects so be happy to answer any questions any additional questions thank you mr. Brown thank appreciate you. it mr. chairman yes I'll move we set a city council we have a motion and a second to resume sitting as a city council. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I'd like to move for adoption of the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill? Aye. Mann? Aye. Deuster House? No. Bauer? Aye. Holbrook? Aye. Havermill? Aye. Farha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Ryan? Lepper? Aye. Masolino? Aye. Frank? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Hoslaw? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no, and 1 absent. So ordered. The next resolution is Council so Resolution of Support and Commitment of Funds for Illinois Department of Transportation Application for Economic Development Program Funds using $219,500. $4 in the Economic Development Program grant funds and $219,504 TIF funds for the reconstruction of second from Maine to Hampshire. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move for adoption of the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Yeah, Mr. Yes. Mayor. I'll just, mention. just for the folks at home, could you let them know about this in the commission of uh, the committee's job? Sure, sure. This is a resolution that's in support of a grant application um, for a project in between the state of Illinois, uh, IDOT, Economic Development Program, the city of Quincy, and Coal Wholesale. And it's essentially to redo Second Street from Maine to Hampshire. Um, besides getting a 50% grant from the state, which is the $219,504, the city of Quincy would get uh, coal to pay for the lighting. And coal has agreed that um, if the project is awarded and IDOT approves it, they will hire 22 full-time positions uh, for an annual salaries each year of $700,000 in the community. And that is uh, a program and jobs that would be um, checked up upon by the state. So they would have reporting requirements that the city wouldn't participate in, that the state would participate in making sure they're, they're meeting their job uh, promises. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, this is probably a question for Chuck. I apologize for not giving you a heads up, Chuck, but right. where, where does this leave our the TIF fund down there after this project? If this this is coming out of this coming year's TIF account. Okay. So uh, assuming that the uh, next step will be the engineering element of this project, and then we'd probably be 
sometime into this summer before we actually start the project. So I'm thinking we'll be paying this in the fall. That'll correspond with our TIF allotment that comes in August. Um, we get in about $360,000 a year in TIF uh, from the primary TIF and about 30000 from the secondary TIF. So uh, that's where this money will come from. And that, and as well as the other funds for the wayfinding project right. as well. That'll come in the same time frame? Right. Okay. All right, thanks. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. Aye. Mann. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Evermel. Aye. Farha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Lepper. Aye. Mussolino. Aye. Brink. Aye. Heineke. Aye. Oslog. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. So ordered. Thank you, Alderman. Next resolution is Director of Utilities and Engineering recommending approval of the proposal submitted by Case and Huff Sluter in the amount of $4,317 to obtain a builder's risk insurance policy for additional coverage for the duration of the water treatment plant project. Your Honor. Yes, Alderman. I move for adoption of the resolution. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gale. Aye. Mann. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook? Aye. Havermo? Aye. Barha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Ryan? Lepper? Aye. Mussolino? Aye. Frank? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Koslag? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. The resolution is adopted. Our last resolution is Chief of Police, Police Automatic Committee, and Purchasing Director recommending approval to pay Blessing Corporate Services $14,000 for 20 physicals. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those, are, are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. Aye. Mann. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermo. Aye. Barha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Lepper. Aye. Mussolino. Aye. Brink. Aye. Heineke. Aye. Hoslog. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. The resolution is adopted. Next, we have an ordinance that's up for a second presentation that amends the fiscal year budget. Have the finance report transfers to be twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars, expenditures to be four hundred twenty-one thousand eight hundred fifty-nine dollars and two cents, and payroll to be six hundred sixty thousand two hundred sixty-six dollars and twenty-three cents. Bar Hall, Juster House, Sasson, Havermill Committee. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move the vo um, the report we received and the vouchers issued for the various amounts. Second. We have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. Aye. Mann. Aye. Juster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermill. Aye. Barha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Lepper. Aye. Mussolino. Aye. Brink. Aye. Heineke. Aye. Oslo. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. So ordered. And the next thing on the agenda is request to speak um, regarding the animal control issues. I'll entertain a motion to uh, suspend sitting of city council. I move we suspend the rules to hear from speakers. Right. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed to order. Before we begin the comments, uh, just as a guideline for anybody comment tonight, if you have anything, uh, any comments directed at specific personnel, we cannot talk about specific personnel issues in uh, in open meetings. So uh, if there's anything specifically that should be addressed to the department head and Chief Copley uh, is here tonight. So we just want to make sure that we are following the uh, following the rules here. So we will go ahead and take our speakers as they're presented on the agenda. Uh, the first being uh, Lynn Fisher. And Ms. Fisher, if you could state your name and address for the record, and I'll remind you, you have five minutes. Uh, my name is Lynn Fisher. I reside at 1245 Cherry Lane. Before I begin, could I please have everyone who is here tonight who has concerns about animal control stand up, please? Thank you. Honorable Mayor Moore and City Council Alderman, my name is Lynn Fisher. I reside at 1245 Cherry Lane. Thank you for allowing me to speak regarding what I feel are serious animal control issues in our city. I was involved in the removal of a dog from 725 South 6th on January 30th of this year. 
I addressed the Animal Control Commission on February 26th regarding this issue. Inquiries were made by myself and others to the Animal Control Representative on that committee about what policies and procedures were followed in this case. No answers or information were forthcoming. We were told that weekly visits to this address were made and the owner had complied with all requests made by Animal Control. There was no explanation given as to why there were no violations issued or charges filed and no offers made to get that information. I spoke with Chief Copley on February 28th regarding lack of information given at the meeting and I feel assured he's addressing that. Why was this particular situation allowed to continue for months with no viable end or solution? Laws and ordinances exist to protect animals in these conditions. The law is open to interpretation, but in this case it was visually evident this animal should have been removed immediately. So why wasn't it? It took two 7th Ward aldermen, the chief of police, the city vet, the county animal warden, and numerous concerned citizens to remove the dog from this environment. In my opinion, this is not good use of taxpayer money or the police chief's time. An animal control officer should always advocate for the animal first, and in this case, that failed. I've been reminded that animals are considered property in the state of Illinois. However, laws exist in our state that say a certain level of care is required and expected if you own that property. This owner was in direct violation of several ordinances regarding proper shelter, <coughs> water, and tethering during this lengthy time frame. To my knowledge, no violations were issued or have any criminal charges been filed against the owner for animal cruelty or neglect. The dog owner also had a misdemeanor animal cruelty violation in 2007. Animal control is not a nine to five Monday through Friday job. There should be something in place to efficiently continue service on weekends, evenings, and holidays. Some issues could be handled with more consistency when calls are received at dispatch. Depending on the operator, time called, and other variations, responses to citizens are inconsistent. Many times people are told there is no officer on duty and the situation goes unresolved. The Animal Control Commission is proposing stricter ordinances to further clarify current laws. Without enforcement, these will be of no value. There needs to be accountability. Violations resulting in fines, penalties, and charges should increase with each occurrence resulting in a final solution. Warnings, tickets, and seizure of an animal are vital to the safety and well-being of our community. Allowing situations to go on endlessly is pointless, inhumane, and often dangerous. Second to the welfare of our citizens and animals is the revenue stream being missed from lack of issuing tickets for violations. Enforcement of animal welfare laws should be no different than other laws we're required to obey. Proof of a rabies vaccination on an animal control call should be no different than proof of a driver's license in a traffic stop. Failure to provide should result in a ticket to the owner. It's the law. There are dangerous situations in our city where people and animals have been attacked and sometimes injured by dogs running at large. Oftentimes there are no criminal charges filed or action taken against the owners. This is unacceptable for public safety. Are we waiting for somebody to be killed before we take action? As a previous 13-year board member of the Quincy Humane Society, I've been well aware of these issues. Unfortunately, it seems there has been little progress made to impress upon our city officials the importance of having a vital, proactive animal control program. The time is now for that progress and change. How we allow animals to be treated in this community is a direct reflection of our city. All of us here tonight are interested in solving these issues and working toward a more safe and humane community. If you have additional questions for me, I would be glad to answer them to the best of my ability or at a later time or immediately following the meeting. Thank you again for your time this evening, and may God bless those who fought for the one who could not. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Fisher. Okay, next we have uh, Tracy Hagman. Tracy, if you could state your name and address for the record, and I'll remind you of five minutes. Sure. Thank Tracy you. Hagman. I'm at 328 South 23rd. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Alderman. I have to say, um, Lynn spoke very eloquently, and we're not here to waste your time. We want to be on point. So I concur with much of what she said. Um, and with it that, I just want to reiterate that we have followed um, in registering our formal complaints starting last November. We've been transparent, respectful, have thoroughly documented everything with pictures, which I did hand out to each of you, and that's the dog in question tonight, for your reference. We have followed the law 
and we have adhered to appropriate protocols regarding chain of command. Um, it took the resolve of a handful of concerned citizens that were not going to be dismissed. Two aldermen, the city vet, and the chief of police to make this one seizure happen. For the record, as Lynn stated, the owner's not been charged. And at this point, the city executed the seizure on January 30th, and my question is, where is the accountability for charges? What serves as a deterrent to stop this abusive behavior as a, an example, both good for our community and for people who continue to do this? I ask you, if the baseline of this equation is flawed, how can we expect improvement and positive change? In closing, we're here to offer solutions tonight. I am highly aware of the city's fiscal situation. I'm not asking for more money to be spent. I'm not asking for another ward to be hired at this time. We're asking for the current warden position, which should be self-funded if the proper citations were being issued with enforcement of our current laws. I look around tonight and everyone that stood up and spoke, I think I speak for many citizens here tonight. We just want to feel safe, we want answers, and we want a plan. The city had the foresight to establish the Animal Control Commission as an advisory board, and this city has a nationally recognized humane society, both of who want to help. As we are all charged as citizens with protecting the best interests of those who can't help themselves, including children, the elderly, and our animals. And that's why we're here tonight. We want to win-win. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Okay, next we will hear uh, from uh, Carla Schenk. And Ms. Schenk, if you could state your name and address for the record, and I'll remind you of five minutes. Uh, my name is Carla Schenk, 1725 Adams Street. If you can speak closer to the mic, please. 1725 Adams go. Street. Um, I was here a couple weeks ago and spoke. Um, my concern is a little bit different. I'm calling about vicious dogs in the neighborhood I live at. Um, I've made several phone calls to um, the police and um, Officer Shear, or whatever you want to call him as, the dog patrol. Um, as a matter of fact, tonight at 6.30, neighbor was walking her dog in her yard. These same dogs come out tonight and started to come into her yard, but got sidetracked by neighbors behind me's dogs and went over to them, and those neighbors were yelling at the dogs. As of 7.15, the police had been called, had not arrived yet. Um, my son was walking his dog in our yard last summer and come running back into the house. Um, the, they were forced to put a pen inside their fence yard because the dogs were coming out underneath of the fence. Um, they deemed one of the black dogs vicious. I have no idea which black dog it is. There's three of them. They have six dogs. Um, today, they're out running. I have pictures on my phone I can show you. They're not in the pen. I have no idea which dog it is. I have um, copies I can make for you. One is a complaint from a, la a lady um, that lives, that her name's Tina Dirk, talking about how she's out walking her own dog. They have attacked her. They've scared her to death. Um, my neighbor, Chuck Obert, spoke the other week. His dog was attacked. I have copies of vet bills. I have another neighbor, Mary Snar, that lives right next to me. Her dog was attacked while her son was walking it. They have vet bills. I found a dead squirrel in my yard. I found a dead dog that Mike Gale come and picked up. Nothing's being done. I, all I hear is that they're being fined. They're being fined. I have neighbors now on both sides of me that have smaller kids than my son. He is 16. Um, somebody's going to get hurt. I'd just like to know what's going to be done before somebody's hurt. Are there any questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda we have Gary Daggett. Mr. Daggett, if you could state your name and address for the record, and I'll remind you that you have five minutes. My name's Gary Daggett, and I live 4022 South 46. And I got some concerns about the yellow labs and, and the other dogs that's out on the South 6th Street. For two years in a row now, summer and winter, summer, they had no shade whatsoever. And a lot of times they didn't have any water. And I said something to them then, and they finally went out and gave them some water. Did and you say it was on South 6th or South 46th? South 6th. South 6th Street? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. I want to make ahead. sure I took down the right nose. And last winter, I stopped the animal warden on the street and told him that they didn't, them dogs did not have any straw in their dog house. Uh, then it was going to be below zero that night. 
And uh, that same day, I seen Mrs. Westerhoff and said something to her about it, too. And the next day, there was two bales of straw in the front yard. And two days later, the animal warden was there, and they finally was putting straw in the dog houses. And they put about two inches of straw in the dog houses and throw the rest of it out on the ground. At least they had some straw in there, don't get me wrong, but that's not enough and not not a reason not to, uh, not to put more in there. And this past summer, same thing, no shade whatsoever. And this past winter, I called Animal Warden again because they had no straw in the doghouse. And this time, he told me that they had, he checked on it, had uh, wood chips in it. Uh, what wood chips has to do with it? I don't know. I don't didn't know they could keep the dog warm or not, but at least they had some kind of shelter. But when this yellow lab at this particular house was seized, I almost cried because that dog was in so such bad shape that I was hoping either to pass away or somebody would take it. And somebody did and thank God they did. But now they have a black lab, or they did have a black lab, they still do. And this dog has to have the heartworms and the worms just like the other dogs did in that yard. And there's nothing being done about that either. And that's my concern. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? We appreciate your time tonight, Mr. Daggett. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have uh, Jennifer Davidson, who will be our last speaker. And Ms. Davidson, if you could state your name and address for the record, and I'll remind you that you have five minutes. It won't take that long. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Davidson, 5727 Skyline Drive. Thank and if you, you could speak closer to the mic. Um, there you go. I'm Jennifer Davidson, Thank you. and my address is 5727 Skyline Drive, Quincy, Illinois. There are, there's something called the Humane Care for Animals Act. That states in that act, one of the provisions for humane care is adequate food, water, shelter, and veterinarian care when needed. I've got a copy of it. The dog that we're all talking about, it doesn't take an expert in this to see that dog was in dire need of attention. And it was put off, was not addressed, and the pictures speak a thousand words. The dog was starving and people had concerns, they weren't addressed. The law provides what is needed for the animal. And I don't understand why it took so long and took people beyond the department that it should have been taken care of in to get this done. And I don't feel that the citizens of Quincy or the animals in that community should have to live like that. And just like the woman that's in fear of going outside because of vicious dogs, my mother-in-law two weeks ago was attacked by a dog, uh, bit, and her dog killed. And uh, that really speaks to me. People's safety and the animal safety and care. And there's provisions given in the Illinois Humane Care for Animals Act for that. Why is that not being used? Why aren't things addressed sooner? Why do we have to go to the lengths we went to with this dog to get issues addressed? What will it take? How long was, were they going to wait for this animal? I mean, I, I would like some answers to those questions. We went before the Animal Control Commission, got no answers, none. I just would like somebody to answer some of those questions. Okay. What exactly does the animal uh, control officer do? What are his job duties? And when we when we resume sitting as city council, I'm sure Chief, somebody, one of the aldermen, probably get the chief up and we can talk a little bit more about it. So we don't want you to think your questions aren't going to get answered. But uh, when citizens are here, we have to stop sitting as city council. So we'll. Go. We'll have the chief come up and okay. give you a little bit. I did just didn't want you to think we weren't uh, answering your questions. Yeah. I just, I would like a job description. Sure. And I'd like to know how many citations, if that's public knowledge, are issued on a, uh, by the month. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Very thank you for much. your time. Thank we really you appreciate for it. Your time. You bet. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to resume sitting as city council. So moved. We have a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are now sitting as city council. Your Honor, yeah, I mean, I'd like the chief to be able to answer, if he would like to respond to any questions that were put up. Whichever, whichever you can. I know some personnel issues. Well, regarding the uh, yellow lab situation and what we were doing and weren't doing, uh, I can provide you guys with a report on that. I can't specifically discuss everything tonight. We have referred this to the state's attorney's office. Uh, they should have been told this at the commission meeting the other night. I don't know if they were or were not, but it has been referred to the through the state's attorney's office for charges. I've not heard back from them, so I really can't get into the ins and outs of that case, nor can I address the personnel issues on open forum, but I will provide you all with a written report on what we were doing. There was a plan. I know there's some speculation that there wasn't. I know that there was. Uh, obviously, it wasn't happening as quick as some people would have liked, um, but I will address all that uh, to you in writing so that you have those answers. Um, once we know for sure where the charges are go, we can make a public statement, but at this point I can't make a public statement. Uh, regarding the dogs, uh, the vicious dogs, I know that the one dog, I declared the one dog vicious. This is the first I've heard it's been out of its pen, if it has. I know she referenced Mike Gale picking up a dead animal it killed. That's had to be two years ago because he hasn't worked for us for two years. So I'm not sure when that happened. Um, but I can tell you that the one dog has been declared vicious. And uh, if it's been out, we'll investigate. It's the first I've heard of it that's been back out. First I've heard of any, any dogs in that area being attacked or people attacked since that dog was declared vicious and put in the pen. I'll investigate it. Uh, I've got no problem doing that. Uh, I guess the biggest thing I want to tell everybody, we don't save all this up for one instance. If you're not happy with the response from anybody from my department, whether it's an patrol or a police officer, waiting until one instance causes you all to get upset, doesn't help. You need to let me know as the things are happening that you're not satisfied with the work of my employees. Saving it up till today doesn't fix anything. At the time you need to be filled out. So, well, you need to call me. I can't answer that because I've been in meetings. Chief, Chief, we'll, Chief, we'll, we'll, we'll have that discussion after the meeting. Okay, yeah, okay. that's fine. Uh, regarding job description, I got no problem posting that on the website. Uh, we do post uh, the numbers, all the animal control numbers are in that uh, monthly report that you guys get to, on, on a monthly basis. Uh, we can get all that out to everybody. But again, my main message is don't save all the complaints up till everybody's worked up in the frenzy. Let's, uh, let's address them as they come in. And as a city, we did explore uh, working with the county. Yes, on we actually, we, we got assistance with the county in, in seizing the dog at the time that we did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alderman Farmer. Yeah, essentially, though, the main concern seems to be the one matter, prosecution. And you've made a criminal referral to the Adams County State's Attorney. Yes. It's their decision, yes. the power to prosecute or not to prosecute rest solely with them. So we're not kicking the can down the road. Right. We've made a criminal referral. So that is at least a step in a positive direction. Thank you. Any additional questions for Chief Copley? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Alderman Brink. Uh, Chief, one of the areas I'd like to explore a little bit, what's the protocol? So if somebody sees an animal they believe is dangerous, not running the neighborhood, what should they do? They if call it's dangerous, they should call 911. 911. And what's the response from 911 you typically? Um, if the animal control officer is working, they'll send him um, and an officer, usually if it's a vicious animal or dangerous animal. If he's not working, they'll send an officer and we will call in, call him in as needed. And that's the written instructions for the 911 operators? Yes. I think it's been my experience, um, I can feel their pain is when I've called, when the people have called me and then I have called, um, the response has been um, not uniform. 
Um, so I think we need to probably work on the response when right. they, when they that, get a again, call. Again, I remind you that that's a different agency. That's not me. That's, no, uh, and so maybe, you know, if we call 911, maybe if we don't get the response, maybe we follow up with the watch commander. I don't know if that's appropriate, mm -hmm. if we can post that number. Mm -hmm. um, and then when somebody does call the watch commander, is that documented every time? Depends on the type of call. If it, if it results in a response by personnel, yes, it'll be documented in the uh, computer. If it's just an informational call, uh, not necessarily. Thank you. Any additional questions? Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Alderman. Chief, do you believe the, um, the laws are too ambiguous to enforce properly when it comes to dogs or other animals being mistreated, their living conditions outdoors? Is it, is it something that's, is the problem that it's difficult to enforce because suitable, a suitable environment for a dog is different in everybody's minds? Um, actually, I don't know that it's too ambiguous to enforce. Could it be tweaked? Probably. I know that the commission's got some recommendations. I'm assuming they're going to make them to this body who will refer it to me and uh, legal to look at. Uh, but I don't know that it's too ambiguous to enforce, but uh, it probably needs a little bit of tweaking. Okay. Thanks. The, the, All rec the recommendations were s are, are being sent to legal. Okay. Okay. Be happy to work on that. Ald Alderwoman, ma'am. Chief, <clears throat> when you say you've declared a dog vicious, can you kind of go into that a little bit? What happens if the dog is supposed to be caged at that point? It's supposed to be uh, caged a spe specific way, only allowed out in specific uh, instances, and that's when and when so it needs to be uh, on a, a, a chain with the muzzle. Okay. Uh, if it gets out again, uh, it can be put down, okay. and we have done that. Okay, thank you. Are there any additional questions? Yeah, I have. Uh, I have your report pulled up from last month, and, and will you define what what do we mean by case file numbers? Is that the that's an incident that the number of incidents in yes. the month, right? And then what what is uh, uh, the rest of them are pretty pretty self-explanatory. But what's a recovery versus a domestic recovery? I think there's a number of recoveries that covers all of them, and then there's two subcategories: one domestic and one wild. Is that right? Is there a wild cat? Well, there's a, the there's a wild animal recovery, and then there's, re oh, the recovery would be all of them. All of them, Okay. Yes. So what is, what's a recovery? You that's uh, an animal that's uh, taken into the dog. custody, taken uh, to uh, the shelter. Okay, thanks. Or sometimes could be returned to an owner if the owner is Okay, but it's, but it's a call, responded, picked up a dog. Yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Are there any additional questions? Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, any additional business? Alderman Gale, any new business? Yes, I would like to talk to Mr. Conte after the meeting. Okay. Alderwoman Mann. Yes, I'd like to talk to Michael Sievert after the meeting. Alderman Deustraus. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I refer to the Utilities Committee the possibility of a street light at, a, at the T Alley intersection in the block that is bounded by Chestnut and Cherry, 2nd Street and 3rd Street. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. That's all I have, Nick. Alderman Bauer. Yes, I got a request for a dumpster on the street at 2305 Elm starting tomorrow for two weeks. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Any additional business? No, that's all. Alderman Holbrook. None, Your Honor. Alderman Havermill. I uh, would like to uh, recognize Troop 42, who is in the crowd tonight, I think to our right and our left. They've got a big big group. Now, these uh, young men are from Camp Point, Golden, Menden, all the areas surrounding Quincy, so we're very uh, fortunate and glad that uh, you came out tonight, and we hope you learned a little something. They're earning their citizenship badge and communications badge, so those earning your communications badge, I think you'll have a lot to write on. Uh, <laughs> that'll be good. You can look online. I'm sure we'll have it for those of you making your brochure. It'll be good what's, uh, what to call them, what's not. So anyway, I think it was a very good meeting for them to attend. I think this is a good example of uh, citizens getting together and uh, making the city government aware of, of things in the neighborhood. So uh, thanks again, Troop 42, for driving uh, down to Quincy, or hopefully your parents drove. Uh, <laughs> so Alderman Farha. No, thank you. Your Alderman Sass. No, sir. Alderman Lepper. Alderman Mussolino. No new business, Your Honor. Alderman Brink. Uh, no, thank you. Alderman Heineken. Yes, sir. 
Uh, March 15th is a Saturday. Table 16 Productions will be doing a movie here in town. Uh, they request temporary street closure, Jersey Street from 4th to 5th. Um, this closure would be from 2 to 4.30. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed or order? Any additional business? Also with this animal thing tonight, I think people need to keep in mind that if they're not happy with the response time, they're not happy with what they end up with, call the chief because they'll listen to you. All right. Alderman. Uh, no, I'd just like to say congratulations to the Notre Dame girls. On oh, that. yeah. Forgot that. Yeah, I mean, th thanks for saving me on that one. Yeah, I went out to the uh, to the rally today, uh, third place, and it, you know this was kind of interesting uh, for the seniors uh, that that were in on, on the basketball team. They are the only group, I believe, in Q and D history that had never ended their season with a loss, and I think that is just spectacular. So I think uh, the city is going to be in good hands when these young ladies uh, take over. Let me tell you. Thank you for that one. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. We have a motion second. All those in favor? Opposed to order. Thank you.